Hello everyone, I'm Marina and it's a Cromel School. More and more nail brands are launching solid gels or cream polishes. What are these? And whether they are more convenient than regular polishes? I suggest we figure it out together today. Let's get started. Here are today's nails. I find them truly gorgeous, by the way. But this coating does not flatter them and kind of ruins their natural beauty. The layer is obviously too thick, so the nails look too bulky. And of course, I'd like to transform them. So I remove the old coverage using a green carbide drill bit up to a thin underlay. Quite recently, I have conducted a poll on a gel polish removal. An e-file versus a soaking method. There were different opinions. Many voted for a soaking, actually, which I thought was considered old-fashioned already. But not for now. There are materials that can be easily dissolved. But still, most of them do not get soaked with acetone-containing liquids, since they are not dissolvable. So, if we try soaking them, we can considerably dry the skin and damage the nail plate while scrubbing it with a pusher. By the way, there is a video on this topic on my channel. It's on whether we should remove or not to remove the gel coating completely. Here is what we do mostly. We take off the base up to a thin layer, keeping about 10-15% to of the coating left. If it's peeling, we take it off completely up to the natural nail using a file. A 180 or 240 grit one, depending on the client's nail type and condition. For thin nails, use a 240 grit file. And a 180 grit one, if there is too much base coat left. Avoid using hard files, since they thin down the nail plate. It will get thinner and the coating won't last on it. Another point is when the coating gets older. And here the thing is that when a client has got three to four corrections done, there is no old coverage left. Sometimes we should remove the coating completely and do it anew. But mostly we do keep a thin layer left. Because it can protect the nail plate from damage. For example, from getting overfiled in the central part or in the sinuses. But there is an issue that many techs take this process literally and remove only the colored coating, keeping all the base layer left, which in turn results in fat nail tips with deformed and uneven free edges, aka nails looking like gum pads, which are far from looking aesthetic. So I recommend you remove the coating up to a thin base layer and then touch it up with a file. That's pretty much it for the removal. Remove all the peelings and soak only those gel polishes that are supposed to be soaked. But mostly we use an e-file. Take off the coating up to a thin layer and touch it up with a file. Now let's proceed with the combined manicure. This cuticle is super thin and if it doesn't bother a client that much, we can do European or filing manicure. When we just apply some remover, push the cuticle back, clean up the pterygium with an orange stick, and that's it. So it's kind of a light version that anyone can easily do at home. Just make sure to use good quality products and work carefully. But since we're professionals, we're doing an e-file manicure. To cut and polish the cuticle, I'm using a red rounded cylinder drill bit. It gently polishes the cuticle, exfoliating all the dead skin cells, which prevents hangnails. I'm very satisfied with this manicure. But note that if you are a beginner, working with this cuticle type, be careful with the flame drill bit, because it can easily cut the skin in the sinuses. So keep an eye on your clients and watch their reaction. For thin cuticles, we go for a red abrasive, so as not to overfile the skin. 
It looks red even like that. Now make sure to clean up all the dust. Don't just cover up the nail with a tissue and pull, but carefully clean it up in the sinuses. Use a micro brush if needed. It gets deeper and cleans it up thoroughly. Instead of the micro brush, we can use a flat natural or synthetic one to clean up all the tiny dust particles. Now we can see how thin some of the nails are. They look red, which indicates that a previous nail tech did not remove the coating up to a thin base layer, but right up to the natural nail, which resulted in damage. The coating won't last long on such thin nails, so I'm using an acid-free primer to prep them. I apply a small amount and let it dry a bit to avoid any peeling later. I will be using this clear rubber base coat. It will amortize the lens and prevent liftings on the free edge. This base coat is a must for when we use camouflage shades. It will act as a barrier between the natural nail and the camouflage coating. It will be hard to see the difference during the removal because it's quite difficult to remove a camouflage base up to the natural nail without damaging it. I will be using this hard base by Rue Nail for the alignment. It's a hard base that is perfect for long nails like my models. They won't bend and the base coat won't sag. The shade is gorgeous. It is light pink, which is one of my favorites. And such shades are in at the moment. There is a short brush, which I love to be honest. But this particular one gets too fluffy and there are bubbles in the material. So I have to pop them with a thin brush, which is a waste of time. But if next you plan to cover them up with color, then don't let them bother you. But in case you want to keep the nails natural, make sure to pop them. And here is a new product by Runeil, Cream Lac or Solid Gouache Gel Polish. I guess they associate them with gouache paints. They are super thick, well pigmented and they don't flow. Here's what it looks like in one layer. I'm using a synthetic brush for thick materials. It is new so it leaves streaks, but once it gets soaked, it will get firm and the lines will disappear. Remember this solid gel palette from AliExpress? Well, to be honest, it is not that convenient for a pro nail tech, because there is a small amount, so it will do for some nail art only. And here, we've got 5 milliliters, so that will last long considering how well pigmented the gel is. We just need a thin layer. Well, it's one thing on tips, now let's try it out on the nails. I wonder how thick the layer will turn out. Now that the brush got firmer, the hair doesn't stick out that much. I grab a small amount first and paint the cuticle zone and the sinuses. Then I grab some more material and at this point I make long moves from the cuticle to the free edge to avoid streaks. The surface should be even and one layer does the job. That was my little experiment. I didn't know if it would get cured, but it did and the color density shocked me. So this is hands down a great product. And actually, I don't know if it's a plus or a minus that it comes in a jar, because we need a separate brush to apply it. I also want to try out these new colors by Runeil. Iridescent shimmery shades. The colors are translucent, but I guess two layers will do. I want to try out a few, so let's do a quick and simple gradient. Such shades mix perfectly. To form a transition, 
I fluff a synthetic brush until it looks like an ombre one and blend out the colors. Then using either a brush or an orange stick, I form such random swirls and they help to create a nice fabric look. I think this nail art looks rather cute and original. And it definitely takes a closer look. I do it with two layers. Now I decrease it and I can't help but add a few stickers. Please let me know in the comments if we need them here. Or I'd better keep the gradient on its own. I've got hooked on sliders lately. Cause they can nicely spice up any nail art. I decided to add a couple of dots with white gel paint to finish off the look. Now I cover up the nails with the top coat, slightly aligning them at this point to cover up the slider and any uneven areas. Turn the nail over to form an even surface. Now I wipe off the tacky residue and file the edges for extra sharpness. Which I know is controversial, but let's keep it for another video. Should we file the tips or not? Let me know if you'd be interested in this topic. Let's check the thickness. Wipe off the dust. The tips got rather thin, cause I did them with one layer. I love the way they turned out. And this thick application was a pleasant surprise. Here's the finished look. Well, this product was definitely worth trying. I guess I just need to continue testing. Give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to become a cool nail tech. As always, success in your work. Good luck. Bye-bye.